What is going on, everybody? I am so excited to bring to you guys my final mock draft of the pre-draft season here. Draft is just two days away. The film's been watched. The opinions have been weighed, and it is time to take the seat again of all 32 teams here and complete this draft. So it is what I would do making each pick with my heart and my brain based off of what I know about all these prospects, not in any way predicting what I will think is gonna happen. You will notice a ton of trades. It's gonna be a lot of fun, a lot of chaos, just like the real draft's gonna be. The Vegas over under on trades, seven and a half. We've got five trades in this mock here. So without further ado, man, let's get into it here. Cleveland number one, Sam Darnold. No surprise here. Well documented what I think of Sam Darnold. Best quarterback prospect, in my opinion, since Andrew Luck came out. Number two, Josh Allen. Sticking with this pick. It's the same thing I made weeks back. Now, my opinion on him has changed a little bit. I think more so now than before that he does need to sit in the oven and develop a little bit, which is why New York makes sense here. But there's no doubt the upside's there. I don't think he's nearly as bad as people think. The completion percentage does not worry me. I see a guy who is accurate. You can throw all the stats in the world you want at me. When I watched his film, at no point did I ever say, this guy is inaccurate. It is his processor that needs to be developed here. I love the scheme fit with Shermer, can maximize that mobility the same way he did with Case Keenum, although now you're giving Shermer the absolute pinnacle of quarterback physical ability. Some Giants fans are gonna hate that pick. I don't care, it's the pick I would make with my heart, I think Josh Allen's gonna be a really good NFL quarterback somewhere between Matthew Stafford and Aaron Rodgers. There is a little bust potential there, but I like the core there for New York to make that happen. Number three, New York Jets. We're taking Josh Rosen here. New York needs a quarterback who can come in, compete, and start day one. That is Josh Rosen. Now, I do think he fits that system quarterback mold, and it's gonna be tough to make it happen here for the Jets, but Josh McCown, one of the better third down quarterbacks in the league last year. You could definitely get that going with Rosen. You're gonna have to address some skill players, get that offensive line short up here to do everything you can to make Josh Rosen successful. And he might not be great right away, but it's a no brainer pick for me. You moved up to get a quarterback. I know I mocked them Saquon before, but I've kind of risen on Josh Rosen in the last three weeks. I think he has a pretty good shot of being a good NFL quarterback. Just maybe a little more system dependent than Darnold and Allen mainly because of that lack of mobility. Number four, easy pick here. The Cleveland thing, for me, it's so easy. There's so much discussion going on with what they do at one and four. It's Bradley Chubb here for me. You get the two best players at the two most important positions in this draft. People think they should trade down. Cleveland has all the picks in the world. Why the hell would you trade down when you compare Bradley Chubb with Miles Garrett on the other side, on the opposite side of the football, you got Sam Darnold with a good set of receivers and Carlos Hyde, who is a good running back when healthy and the second year of a talented offensive line that's gonna mesh together. Slam dunk draft, I really think for Cleveland here, who again, has a ton of picks still to come. You're looking at one of the best drafts of all time. That said, Cleveland just might screw it up because they're the Cleveland Browns. Okay, number five, we got our first trade here. Denver, John Elway already said they're shopping the fifth pick and we're gonna have the Oakland Raiders trading up here for Saquon Barkley. I have a feeling that John Gruden is in love with Saquon Barkley, just as we all are. But he comes in, he wants to establish a new identity for this Raiders team. This is not necessarily a reflection of what I think of Marshawn Lynch and Doug Martin. I think those guys are fine, but they're older. Injury questions, just knock out of the park here. Trade up. Get Saquon Barkley. It's going to take probably your second round pick to do this. But I really think this team needs some offensive playmakers outside of Amari Cooper there. I don't think Jordy Nelson's going to bring a lot to the table there with Derek Carr. But this really sets this offense up to be the explosive unit that you want it to be that, quite frankly, is low key not that good. Don't think Derek Carr is as good as people think. I don't think Amari Cooper has been as productive as people might think. I think he's got the upside, but great pick here for the Raiders. Then number six, Quentin Nelson to the Colts. Pretty easy pick there. Boost up that offensive line. You get one of the best guard prospects that I've ever evaluated. And you got a pretty underrated offensive line there if everyone can stay healthy. Number seven, this is a huge surprise. And this is kind of the highlight 
of this entire mock draft here. Lamar Jackson to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now hear me out. Just hear me out before you go crazy and let loose in the comments. Point number one, Jameis Winston has not developed an ounce since he entered the NFL. Point number two, your division consists of the New Orleans Saints with a super young, talented team led by Drew Brees, the Carolina Panthers who aren't going anywhere by any means and have a really good young defense, and the Atlanta Falcons, one of the youngest, most talented teams in the entire league with a franchise quarterback and Matt Ryan who's not going anywhere. Point number three, you are in the NFC. Aaron Rodgers, Jimmy Garoppolo, Russell Wilson, Carson Wentz. I could keep going. Minnesota and that defense. You are not even competing this year with Jameis Winston. You're not competing in the next four to five years with Jameis Winston, who I'm sorry, is Jay Cutler. The final point here, you are about to have to pay Jameis Winston probably about what Derek Carr made, $25 million a year for about four or five years, and you will be stuck in absolute purgatory. Why the hell would you ever want to enter that as a franchise who has been disappointing for the last decade? You're buying your ticket to six to nine wins every year for the next five or six years. You're never going to be in a position to take a quarterback, and you're pretty much never going to make the playoffs. Yuck. Move on. Draft Lamar Jackson. For now, the plan will be to compete with Jameis Winston and eventually beat him out because I really do love Lamar Jackson's upside here. Got a ton of weapons. We're going to have to shore up that offensive line and probably get a running back. But if I am the GM of the Tampa Bay Bucks, I have a top seven pick and a really good quarterback class. I'm taking advantage of that. This is your best chance to move on from the Jameis Winston era probably in the next decade. All right, let's move on. Number eight, Chicago Bears, Harold Landry, edge rusher to compliment Leonard Floyd. You've loaded up that offense. Now it's time to get an identity for that defense. Get a good edge rush there. You've got some good linebackers, good D-line, and some pieces on that defensive secondary that I like as well. Chicago Bears potential surprise team next year. Number nine, Roquan Smith to the 49ers. Now it seems likely that they will not be getting anything from Reuben Foster ever again. Apparently the victim is holding out on some things in the court and it sounds like there might be a chance that these charges don't come through. We'll see. But whether or not you got Reuben Foster there, Roquan Smith is still a home run pick here. A true can't miss prospect in this class. You know what you're getting. Super fast, super instinctive, yet slightly undersized linebacker who has gained weight and is going to take on blockers, I think, better than some people think. Need a true leader on that defense, you get it in Roquan Smith. Now, number 10, the Denver Broncos who traded down. This was a great trade down for the Broncos because, honestly, there's a lot of defensive talent here that looks just like it did at number five. If this team is going to compete now, which I think is the right move. Seriously, this team was 4-5-0 or five and oh last year, had just whooped the Cowboys. C.J. Anderson got hurt. You suffered some other injuries. But get back to playing great defense, and you draft Minka Fitzpatrick here, hybrid corner safety out of Alabama. And what this really allows you to do, really eliminate those annoying crossing routes, bubble screens, RPOs, all that stuff that dominates the league today, paired with a pass rush with Von Miller and his compliments, get back to playing good defense, managing the game now with your new quarterback Case Keenum, and potentially develop the running game later in this draft with a really deep class of running backs, where now you've picked up an extra pick to potentially get someone like John Kelly or Kalen Balaj later. So Denver Vans might be upset that we're not going quarterback here. I think in the AFC, this team can still compete and I think it's worth a shot when you have a guy like Von Miller in their prime. All right, pick number 11 here, Miami Dolphins. We're going Denzel Ward. This team has not invested enough into cornerback, and you get a really good one here in Denzel Ward. Pretty easy pick for me. Number 12, Buffalo Bills. Now, a lot of people might be thinking I'm going Baker Mayfield here with the team that traded up to potentially get a quarterback. Nope, not going Baker here. It's value just isn't there for me. It's well documented how I feel about Baker Mayfield. I do not think he is a first round quarterback prospect. Way too many easy throws. He's not mobile enough to be Russell Wilson and be an elite outside the pocket passer. He's not going to be Drew Brees and all of a sudden become 
one of the smartest, most accurate, hardest working players in NFL history. Not buying any of that. I think he peaked in college. If you want to know more about why I don't like Baker, you can go ahead and watch my quarterback's video. So it's not Baker Mayfield here. I'm not really considering other quarterbacks as high either. And it's kind of frustrating. You give up your franchise left tackle to move up here and end up coming up short at quarterback, but you're still moving up to get elite defensive talent here in Tremaine Edmonds. This team needs linebacker help and you're getting one of the highest ceiling players at any position in this entire class. It's gonna come in, start at linebacker right away and really contribute towards this defense becoming one of the nastiest ones in the NFL after a really good season last year. Number 13, Redskins, Derwin James, pretty easy pick here. You got DJ Swearinger there, he's fine, but you need another safety to compliment there. And Derwin James really fits the motto of what this defense is doing this year, which is just badass, hard hitting, fast, physical players. Derwin James fits right in with that. It's gonna be a nasty, nasty defense next year. I really think this Redskins team is underrated heading into next season. Okay, number 14, we got the Green Bay Packers here. I just did a seven round mock for them yesterday and I had them taking Harold Landry, but uh, of course here he's gone. And really these last six players that we're looking at here from Landry up to Derwin would have been the six players that I would target if I was Green Bay here. So the next guy that I'm thinking about drafting here is Josh Jackson, but 14's a little high for Jackson, honestly. You can get some value in trading down if you're Green Bay here. So we're gonna move down with the Chargers who move up to fill their biggest need in IDL, interior defensive lineman, Maurice Hurst, absolute monster. The potential of Aaron Donald there with Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram. A slam dunk pick for the Chargers. Doesn't take him too much to move up and do that. Probably a third round pick, maybe a fourth. So then number 15, Cardinals. Again, not going Baker here. We're gonna go Mike McGlinky best offensive tackle in this class. Basically just gearing up to make the life of Sam Bradford as healthy and easy as possible. Uh, basically keep our fingers crossed that Bradford can stay healthy. And if he doesn't, hopefully we're bad enough to put us in the running for one of the top quarterbacks next year. And now we have a new tackle to make that guy's life easier. And then number 16, I'm gonna steal this pick right from Brett Coleman. Just watched his mock draft, great video. Definitely check that out. Uh, really liked his reasoning here for the Ravens. Uh, honestly, when you look at the players available, there was no clear cut pick here, but I didn't want to trade down because this team, it's hard to find a clear need. You're stuck with Joe Flacco in that contract. The offensive line, yeah, they've got holes, but they've got players coming back from injury that should be able to fill that thing out. And their defense is really deep across the board. But yeah, Terrell Suggs is getting older here. He has one, maybe two great years left. And then you have a huge hole at that number one pass rush position. I know they have a bunch of dudes there, but none of them are really number one edge rushers, I don't think. So you take the raw guy here who's going to be part of that rotation, maybe going to see a quarter of the snaps this year, but has insane upside Marcus Davenport. And I really think that all adds up for the Ravens. So then number 17, the Packers get exactly what they wanted. When they trade down from 14, they get Josh Jackson to beef up that secondary, uh, but it's kind of a disappointing draft for them. This, they were probably hoping to get one of those six guys that went right before them. And then number 18, I've got a trade up here with the Josh Jackson pick, corner starting to go, and there's a team picking at 22 that really needs a corner. The Panthers, they're gonna move up and take Isaiah Oliver, corner out of Colorado, gaining a lot of traction in the last few weeks. Really good corner, was probably the best of those three there in Colorado between Witherspoon and Awuzie who came out last year and had good rookie seasons. And then number 19, Dallas gets their Des Bryant replacement, Cortland Sutton. I think he's a very similar player, but probably without the baggage. This team really needs offensive weapons to help out Dak. Um, but I do think Dallas is gonna have a bounce back year, get that running game going, and now you've got a kind of do-it-all, big physical receiver in Cortland Sutton who is my number one receiver in this class. Number 20, we're going Rashawn Evans to Detroit. Now I know they went linebacker last year, but they still have two other starting linebackers, assuming they're gonna run a 4-3 under Matt Patricia. Now my comparison for Rashawn Evans was Donta Hightower. He's a little lighter, but he can come in and play that same outside linebacker position for the Lions, sort of a do-it-all player that he can really build this scheme around. 
Really like that pick for the Lions, the number 21. This is sort of my biggest lock pick of the year. Bengals, James Daniels, center out of Iowa. So they trade down, they get a left tackle, and they're able to get the best center in this class. Then we've got number 22 here. I should have mentioned that it was the Seahawks that traded down with the Panthers there at 18. Now, the Vikings know the Seahawks are looking at guard. James Daniels just went, and the Vikings all the way down there at 30. They do not want to miss out on one of these great guards between Will Hernandez and Isaiah Wynn. Sure, they could wait and probably get Billy Price, but honestly, this team is so close. They've already been aggressive signing Kirk Cousins. Why not give up a little bit of draft capital to go up and get a huge upgrade at guard? Your best lineman just retired in Joe Berger. You got to replace him. Go get Will Hernandez, elite run blocking guard, and make sure that this run game is going to be working to complement this whole offense. And you get ahead of Seattle by doing this move. So the number 23, the Patriots staying put here, not really doing anything rash. They're going to stay true to their board player I could see them really liking. Kind of funny how every time we talk about the Patriots, it's trying to predict how they're thinking because Patriots think differently than everyone else. I thought about trading down here, but Justin Reed, defensive back out of Stanford. He's the 19th best player on my board. Super athletic, good bloodlines, can play nickel corner, can play safety. He's going to be their Patrick Chung replacement, but can really be used all over the place. And I could see him just being a perennial Pro Bowler there for the Patriots as just a flexible defensive back who can really do it all. And then number 24 here, Seattle trading down. They moved down because they don't have a lot of picks. They gave up one to get their left tackle last year. So they moved down a healthy bit there with the Panthers. You know, that trade would probably consist of a third round pick and then maybe like a pick swap, like a four for a six or something. But you definitely add some draft capital. And then you get Isaiah Wynn, the guard out of Georgia. You just need more talent on that offensive line. Simply put, you got to reinvest in this offense, in this new sort of era for Seattle that should be led by Russell Wilson as the face of the franchise. Pick number 25 here, Tennessee. Now, Tennessee is pretty close. You know, I think all the things they've done, getting a new coach is pretty much all they needed to do with that offense to hopefully finally take a step forward with Mariota. But defensively, they need more talent at premier positions, corner and edge rush. You know, they've got some good beef. They've come around on Kevin Byard as a good safety, but you need an edge rusher here. Lorenzo Carter should come in, take reps from Morgan Burnett right away. Super high upside outside linebacker, defensive end. Tennessee has all the depth in the world, but they need superstars, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And you have that upside there with Lorenzo Carter. Then number 26, the Atlanta Falcons taking Deron Payne, IDL out of Alabama. Going to come in, replace the gap left there by Poe. And the Falcons really don't have a ton of needs. They're so deep and so young, but they definitely need more interior defensive line help. And they get a really, really good player who can start right away in Deron Payne. The number 27 to the Saints, kind of the same thing here. Really deep team has a need there on the inside of the defensive line. So we're taking Taven Bryan, and he might even play some edge rush for this team. Super explosive defensive lineman, but this team needs someone other than Cameron Jordan to help this pass rush. Uh, I, I think this is a home run pick. This would be one of my highest graded picks in this first round for the Saints, a team who I like the direction they're having as a team that's just trying to lean more towards running and playing defense a little more old school and this is definitely an old school pick with a flexible freaky defensive lineman then number 28 we blew the world away there with the lamar jackson pick at number seven for the bucks and we've got the bucks trading up here with the pittsburgh steelers now wait for it they are trading Jameis winston to the pittsburgh steelers the Steelers get their quarterback to sit and develop behind Big Ben. It's an expensive one, but he is still on that rookie contract, so he's a little cheaper. His, his contract's going to go up in that fifth year next season, but it makes sense for the Steelers. You can kind of take a step back with Jameis, and hopefully he can recollect himself and be ready to take over the Steelers franchise in a year or two when Big Ben hangs it up. And then for the Bucks, you get rid of the headache. You go a forward with Lamar Jackson as your starting quarterback. But if you're doing that, you need to help them with the offensive line. So we're trading up to get ahead of a few teams that need an offensive tackle. 
to get ahead of the Patriots and the Bills, to move up and take Colton Miller, who really is the only other offensive tackle with first round upside to be a franchise left or right tackle. I know he's raw. I know he had a lot of games with bad tape, but he had games with good tape as well. He doesn't have to be perfect right away with Lamar Jackson, who can extend plays and alter a good pass rush anyway. I'm not entirely sure the logistics here. Does Tampa have to give up their second round to make this happen? Maybe it's a swap of second round picks along with Jameis. It'd be something along those lines. I don't think Jameis Winston is worth a first round pick with the contract that he's about to make, but he's probably worth an early second. So some combination of picks with James Winston to make that happen. And then number 29, Jacksonville has a gaping hole at nickel corner, very gaping compared to the rest of this team that's pretty stacked other than quarterback. Do you think about Baker Mayfield here? Well, a lot of people would, I wouldn't. I'm not touching Baker Mayfield in the first round. But that whole nickel corner, I'm taking Dante Jackson. He's going to come in and start right away in the nickel. Freak athlete, 5'11", undersized corner from LSU. But he's got upside as well to pull a Casey Hayward and move outside once like A.J. Boye gets older and they move on from him. And then you got Jalen Ramsey and Dante Jackson just tearing it up there. Great pick there for Jacksonville. And then the Bills here at 30. I know what you guys are saying, Bills fans. Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield. I'm sure you're screaming it at your TVs, but your GM here, that franchise guy is not listening. I'm not going to do it. No way. Especially not in Buffalo with that climate. What I'm doing here is pushing these quarterbacks back. I'm going to say, you know what? We've got AJ McCarron. Personally, I still think Nathan Peterman has potential to be a starter in this league. I'm not saying they are our future, but for now, I'm not going to reach for a quarterback when he's going to come in and be about the same as what we have, which I honestly think about Baker Mayfield. I have a higher grade on Nathan Peterman coming out than I did about Baker Mayfield. Say whatever you want in the comments. Bring up his five interception game. Do all that. I don't care. I'm taking DJ Moore out of Baltimore here to help this core and hope that when we do find out who our quarterback's going to be, maybe he's on the roster, probably not. It's probably someone we either take later here or take in the future. But DJ Moore gives this team that playmaker they need. Calvin Benjamin, not a playmaker. Charles Clay, not a playmaker. Well, Sean McCoy is, but he's 30-year-old running back. DJ Moore gives you a guy like Stefan Diggs. You get the ball in his hands, make something happen, and a guy who's going to develop as an all-around receiver this also allows this team to make up for what was a terrible pick in Zay Jones early in the second round last year, basically just writing that off and attacking the same sort of idea that they were trying to get in Zay Jones. So then number 31 here, the Patriots. We're going to take Luke Falk, quarterback out of Washington State, the Tom Brady heir apparent. And whether it's three years from now or five years from now, you take him in the fifth round so that you get that fifth year option. Luke Falk has all the tools in the world. He constantly says how Tom Brady is his role model. So you put him right there. Let him learn behind Josh McDaniels and Bill Belichick. And when the time his number gets called, I think it's going to be a seamless transition. I really like Luke Falk. He's got an elite release. He's got a good processor. He's comfortable in the pocket. Can make all the throws in the world. Slam dunk pick here for the Patriots. It's not Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield's going to come in and be a distraction for four years as Tom Brady keeps playing year after year after year. You don't want Baker Mayfield cooking in the kitchen. He's a guy that's going to have to start right away, I think. He, I think he's hit his ceiling. And if he's not starting, he's going to make noise about it. I don't want that, especially if I'm the Patriots. Look what they did to Malcolm Butler in the Super Bowl. They want someone quiet who's going to do the Patriot way thing. And that's exactly what Luke Falk is. And I actually think this one is, is something that could happen here. And then number 32, there's still one real true first round talent here sitting there, Vita Vea. Now the Eagles aren't going to take him because of that D line, but it's already been said that the Eagles want to trade down. So we're going to find a trade partner here. The Denver Broncos are going to move up about five spots to make this pick. And that's a home run and a half for the Broncos. You get Minka at 10 and then Vita Vea at 32. So you have significantly upgraded this run defense and your pass defense. I would be hella excited 
if I were a Broncos fan and this is how it played out. So I told you guys it was going to be crazy. We're heading into day two with Baker Mayfield still on the board. Calvin Ridley, Leighton Vander Ash, Arden Key, bunch of really good players early in that second round. You know, there's going to be a lot of randomness and stuff that we didn't expect on Thursday. So before you shred me in the comments, because I know it's coming, there's way too many opinions with draft stuff for everyone to agree with what I said here. But again, this is what I would do based on my draft board. If you want to check that draft board out, it's in the description there. You can get it through Patreon or PayPal. Gonna have one more video, I think, before the draft. We'll have my guys, all my favorite players in this class. And then make sure you're following me on Twitter. That's at TFG underscore football. Plenty of live reactions to the draft. And then the night of the draft, if not the morning before, I will have draft grades galore. We'll definitely have winners and losers from the first round. When the full draft is done, we'll do a draft grade for every NFL team. I am still willing to do a seven round mock for your team if you become a $5 contributor on my Patreon. Otherwise, I'm not gonna be able to get to any more seven round mock drafts. Looking forward to hearing from you guys, what you guys think of this wild draft. So cheers and we will see you soon.